Swami Chinmayananda Saraswati, born Balakrishna Menon, the 8th of May 1916 to the 3rd of August 1993, was a Hindu spiritual leader and a teacher who inspired the formation of Chinmaya Mission, a worldwide non-profit organization to spread the knowledge of Advaita Vedanta, the non-dual system of thought found in the Upanishads, which epitomize the philosophical teachings of the Vedas. Chinmayananda is known for teaching Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, and other ancient Hindu scriptures. From 1951 onward, he spearheaded a global Hindu spiritual and cultural renaissance that popularized the religion's esoteric scriptural texts, teaching them in English all across India and abroad. Chinmayananda inspired the formation of Chinmaya Mission Program in 1953. Founded by his disciples and led by him, it is a spiritual, educational, and charitable non-profit organization that encompasses more than 300 centers in India and internationally. He authored 95 publications, including commentaries on the major Upanishad and Bhagavad Gita. He was a visiting professor of Indian philosophy at several American and Asian universities and he conducted university lecture tours in many countries. Topic Biography Topic Early Life and Education Balakrishna Menon, who later became known as Swami Chanmayananda, was born in the city of Ernakulam in present-day Kerala, India, on 8 May 1916, as the eldest son of a prominent judge, Vidake Kuruppathu Kuttan Menon. His mother, Parakuti Amma died while giving birth to her third child, and his father remarried. He completed his formal schooling in Sri Rama Varma High School, Kochi (1921–1928), and Vivakotayam School, Thrissur (1928–1932). He completed his F.A. Fellow of Arts at the Maharaja's College, Ernakulam (1932–1934), and his B.A. Bachelor of Arts at the St. Thomas College, Trichore (1935–1937). He went on to Lucknow University 1940–1943 to earn postgraduate degrees in literature and law. While completing courses in journalism, although he would go on to become a celebrated spiritual teacher, in his student years, Balin, as he was known, had yet to formally accept religion. In the summer of 1936, he visited the eminent sage, Sri Ramana Maharshi. By Chinmayananda's later personal accounts, when Ramana Maharshi looked at him, he experienced a thrill of spiritual enlightenment which, at the time, he promptly rationalized away as being mere hypnotism. <laughs> <laughs> Indian independence movement and imprisonment Approaching August 1942, in the midst of a wide-scale attempt by Indian activists to make the British quit India, Balin was one of the students to join in writing and distributing leaflets to stir up national pride. A warrant was issued for his arrest. When word of this reached him, he went undercover spending the next year moving around in the state of Abbottabad, out of range of British officials, and then moved to Delhi. In 1944, almost two years after the British had issued his arrest warrant, believing his case was long forgotten, Balin arrived in Punjab and associated himself with several freedom groups. He advised students on distributing leaflets and organizing public strikes but was arrested and imprisoned. He spent several months in unhygienic conditions in prison and caught typhus. This caused him to be among those who were carried out into the night and tossed beside a road on the outskirts of the city, where he was found by a passing Indian Christian. Reminded of her son serving in the army, she took him to her home and called for a doctor, who insisted that he was taken to a hospital. Career in journalism Balin slowly recovered his health. 
K. Rama Rao gave Balin his first job, as a journalist at the National Herald, a young newspaper that had been founded a few years back by Jawaharlal Nehru. He wrote a series of articles on the imperative of socialism in a society where the vast majority of people were poor. He covered subjects ranging from history and culture to social and political issues. Articles such as, In Praise of the Postman, and The Mochi, Symbol of Craftsmanship, gained him a reputation as a controversial character. In 1947, he began a new series of articles for the Commonwealth. Topic: <inaudible> Study of Vedanta. It was while working as a journalist that he traveled to Sivananda's ashram in Rishikesh for this purpose of writing an exposé of the Sadhus. He later said. I went not to gain knowledge, but to find out how the Swamis were keeping up the bluff among the masses." In the summer of 1947, Balin arrived in Rishikesh, by the banks of the Ganges and made the one-mile hike to the Divine Life Society, the ashram of Swami Sivananda. There, at the age of 31, he went from being a skeptic to an enthusiast, finally becoming a renunciate monk. He began reading more about Hindu scriptures and reviewing spiritual books. Sivananda recognized Balin's latent talents and entrusted him to organize a Gita committee. Having returned to the Divine Life Society ashram, on 25 February 1949, the holy day of Mahashivratri, Balin was initiated into sannyasa Hindu vow of renunciation by Sivananda, who gave him the name Swami Chanmayananda, or Bliss of pure consciousness. With Sivananda's blessing, Chenmayananda sought out one of the greatest Vedantic masters of his time, Tapavan Maharaj of Uttarkashi, and devoted the next few years of his life to an intensive study of Vedanta under his tutelage. As his disciple, from 1949, Chenmayananda led an extremely austere lifestyle and underwent a rigorous study of the scriptures. Topic. Launch of spiritual movement In 1951, flying in the face of orthodox Hindu traditions but with the blessings of his guru, Chinmayananda decided to bring the teachings of Vedanta to the masses. It had been traditionally a knowledge reserved only for Brahmins. In May of that year, he left the Himalayas with a plan to set out on an All India tour and to visit places of worship to see how Hindu religious heritage was being handed down. He said of that time, I was miserably disillusioned and disappointed about the stuff doled out as the best in Hinduism. My experiences during those five months of roaming only strengthened my conviction that I must execute. Upanishad Jnana Yajna sessions lecture series all over India in all the great cities Chenmayananda held his first lecture series at a Ganesha temple in the city of Pune in December 1951 His audiences soon swelled from a handful into thousands Army officers from the Southern Command attended and the audience overflowed into the lanes near the temple Brahmin priests were called to conduct the yajna Vedic ritual, and to their surprise, everyone in the audience, man and woman, across all social strata, was asked to participate in the rituals. <laughs> Chinmaya mission At the end of the second Jnana Yajna in Madras in 1953, a handful of people expressed the desire to create a forum for the study and discussion of Vedanta. Chinmayananda agreed in principle, but he said, Don't start any organization in my name. I have not come here to be institutionalized. I have come here to give the message of our ancient sages, which has benefited me. If it has benefited you, pass it on." The Madras group insisted that the best way to pass it on was through the support of a forum. They wrote back pointing out that the word Chinmaya did not have to indicate Chinmayananda's name, since, in Sanskrit, the word itself means pure knowledge, which they were seeking. He conceded, 
On 8 August 1953, the Chinmaya Mission was formed. Before long, hundreds of study groups were set up all over the country for people to get together in small batches to study religion and philosophy in a systematic manner. Devi groups were organized for women to take up regular spiritual study and social work. In 1956, the 23rd Jnana Yajna in Delhi was inaugurated by the President of India, Rajendra Prasad. He spoke highly of the work Chinmayananda was doing to restore India's cultural glory. In a span of five years, Chinmayananda had instructed over 50,000 of his countrymen through 25 Jnana Yajnas across the country. On 6 March 1965, Chinmayananda set out on his first global teaching tour, covering 39 cities in 18 countries Thailand, Hong Kong, Japan, Malaysia, United States, Mexico, Spain, United Kingdom, Belgium, the Netherlands, Sweden, Germany, Denmark, France, Switzerland. Switzerland, Italy, Greece and Lebanon. Over the next 28 years, he continued these international discourses, staying only a week or so in each place, delivering a minimum of two lectures a day, and handling numerous meetings, interviews, discussions, and programs. He wrote scores of letters a day. It soon became necessary to coordinate the growing spiritual movement in the United States. Chinmaya Mission West was formed in 1975 for this purpose. Chinmayananda's message resonated with heads of other faiths. One of his yajnas in Bombay was inaugurated by Cardinal Valerian Gracias, a prominent Catholic archbishop of the time. The Dalai Lama, head of the Tibetan Buddhist order, visited with him at the Chinmaya Mission Ashram in Sidbari in 1981. Chinmayananda was a supporter of interfaith dialogue and participated in many interfaith events. In 1992, he undertook a lecture tour of 12 U.S. universities to establish an international library and research center, the Chinmaya International Foundation, in Kerala, India. Topic: <laughs> Vishva Hindu Parishad. In 1963, Swami Chinmayananda wrote an article airing the idea of calling for a World Hindu Council, inviting delegates from throughout the world to discuss the difficulties and needs concerning the "...survival and development of Hindu culture". This attracted the attention of RSS Prakarak SSAPTE, who was airing similar ideas at that time. APTE and Chinmayananda jointly organized such a conference at the Sandipani Ashram in August 1964, which resulted in the founding of the Vishva Hindu Parishad. Swami Chinmayananda was elected as president and APTE as general secretary of the new organization. Topic: <laughs> Death Chinmayananda had chronic heart problems. He had his first heart attack in 1969, when his treatment at the newly opened Chinmaya Mission Hospital in Bangalore made him its first patient. In the summer of 1980, when he was in the United States for a series of Niana Yajnas, he had to undergo multiple heart bypass surgery in Texas. On 26 July 1993, he suffered breathing problems in San Diego, California and on 29 July he had emergency heart bypass surgery at Sharp Memorial Hospital. His condition continued to be critical and he was put on a life support system. He died on 3 August 1993. His followers mark the date as the occasion when he attained Mahasamadhi. On 7 August 1993, thousands of people were at Indira Gandhi International Airport in New Delhi when his body returned to India. It was transported to Sidbari, Himachal Pradesh, where it was finally laid to rest in accordance with Vedic ritual. A Mahasamadhi shrine has been built there. Topic. Tribute 
40 years after his first Jnana Yajna, on 24 December 1991, Chinmayananda's devotees gathered in Mumbai to offer him an amount of gold equal to his body weight, presented to him on a tula ceremonial balance scale in an age-old ritual called Suvarna Tulabharam. The funds generated were used to support the myriad service projects and programs of Chinmaya Mission. Legacy Chinmaya Mission Chinmayananda established ashrams around the world as places for spiritual retreat, study, and practice. There are numerous and diverse devotional, spiritual, cultural, and social projects that the Chinmaya Mission continues to administer and conduct in Chinmayananda's memory, including the Bala Vihar, the Chinmaya Yuva Kendra, CHYK, the Global Youth Wing of Chinmaya Mission, and Chinmaya Study Groups for Adults, which are also known as Devi Groups. The mission has also constructed over 58 temples in India and abroad and it operates the Chinmaya Organization for Rural Development CORD, which was founded by Chinmayananda to facilitate integrated sustainable development for the poor through self-empowerment. <laughs> Chinmaya International Foundation He established the Chinmaya International Foundation at the Tharavad House of Adi Shankara which the foundation bought, in the village Velayanad in Aranakulam district in Kerala. <laughs> <laughs> Nursery school From its beginnings in 1967 at a nursery school inaugurated by Chinmayananda in Kalangod, Kerala, India, today there are over 76 Chinmaya Vidyalayas schools, seven Chinmaya colleges, and the Chinmaya International Residential School in India, and the first Chinmaya Vidyalaya outside India's borders, in Trinidad, West Indies. Medical facilities. Chinmayananda inaugurated the Chinmaya Mission Hospital in 1970. The facility has grown into a modern, fully equipped 200-bed hospital in Bangalore in Karnataka, India. In the late 1970s, Chinmayananda established rural health care services in Sidbari, Himachal Pradesh, India. Topic: <laughs> Publications. Chinmayananda authored 95 publications in his lifetime, including 40 commentaries on classical scriptural texts, 8 compilations, 13 co-authored works and 34 original works. Over the years, luxury hotels in India started keeping a copy of his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita in all their guest rooms. His books, written in English, have been translated into numerous regional Indian languages, including Hindi, Tamil, Malayalam, Marathi, Telugu, Kannada, Odia, Bengali, Sindhi, and Urdu and in one European language, French. His birth centenary has been celebrated with publication of Chinmaya Birth Centenary Series. A series of 12 books are being published. The eleventh in the series is on Sadhana, the spiritual trail. The book is named as Life of I. Topic <laughs> BMI chart. The BMI Body Mind Intellect chart is a teaching tool innovated by Chinmayananda that became one of his hallmarks. It categorizes the totality of human experience, according to the science of Vedanta, by drawing on eleven characters of the English and Devanagari alphabets. Honours and recognition On 2 December 1992, Chinmayananda addressed the United Nations and the talk was titled, Planet in Crisis. The U.S. magazine, Hinduism Today, conferred him with its Hindu Renaissance Award and the title of Hindu of the Year 
In 1992, in 1993, he was selected as President of Hindu Religion for the Centennial Conference of the Parliament of the World's Religions in Chicago, where Swami Vivekananda had given his address 100 years previously. He was also to be honored for his selfless service to humanity in Washington, D.C. at World Vision 2000, a conference of religious leaders organized by Vishva Hindu Parishad on 6–8 August 1993. He did not attend either of the latter two functions, as he died on 3 August 1993. On 8 May 2015, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi released a commemorative coin to mark his birth centenary.